quick waiting. Yeah, no problem. We'll, we'll, Amy, we'll keep you on until we can. I've just hit record. Um, already a couple of pre-meeting record button, a couple of you have said some very valuable bits of information. Um, I, so just welcome to um, Moira Bush Academy free class. I do this once a month and normally I do free readings or just topics that are in the news. But this time uh, the dragon book energy is beginning to build and they, they've just been around me so much. I thought let's make the topic about the dragons today. And especially the next level of dragons that are coming through, which is very evident in a bunch of you asking some very strange dragons to be made. One of them, of course, is the platinum dragon that I have here as well. Um, I'd love you to share that in class today as well. And um, and just really uh, the idea here is how can the dragons help you? What what can you do with the knowledge and information of your Stargate dragon is dragons are about many multiple layers of support in different dimensions but there is the star seed star dragons energy that are beginning to come through and they're appearing in very pearlescent pastely kind of almost iridescent colors so we just want to kind of connect with that and, and, and have you connect with that so that you can begin to bring them through to support you so the first question was um lisa asked a question about the dragon book and authors just pose that question for the recording lisa i had asked um does someone necessarily have to be part of the color mirrors family i guess a practitioner or a teacher to um have the opportunity to write in the uh 11 dragons of wisdom mm -hmm. book and the answer to that is if it's somebody that loves color mirrors, they maybe have not done practitioner teacher program, but they love color mirrors. They've used the bottles. Um, they have maybe done some other smaller workshops like numerology or a dragon workshop or something, you know, that, that the peripheral spin off courses from the, from the, from color mirrors, as long as they love color mirrors, they definitely will be um, able to apply to be an author in the book. We have five, potentially six authors. I'm waiting for one lady to make up her mind. So we need 11 authors minimum to get this project off the ground. We can we can increase it to more authors if they did come in. Our main, our main um, uh, thing with this book is timing. We want to make sure that the, this book happens um, you know, in the year of the dragon, we don't want to start writing it in December and then we're in 2025 and it's we kind of out the energy of the dragon. We want to get that going. So we need commitments from people, you know, pretty, pretty fast. And please, you know, payment is not an issue. Speak to me. We can we can work out a plan for you. Um, a lot of people don't have a 50 percent deposit and then the rest over four months. A lot of them are just paying everything spread out over four months and even longer if you need but please just contact me don't let that be an issue this you know so many times people are saying to us how can we help color mirrors be more visible in the world you know all of you have had that thought you've had that conversation with me how come a lot of people don't know about color mirrors and seems to be only a small group of people well this is the opportunity to 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 spread the energy become part of a collaborative project and let's spread the energy of color mirrors through the dragons Okay, um, then Deborah, you said something about some dragons. Oh, dragons. yes, we have a couple new dragons that come have come forth. Mm -hmm. um, this one is the star seed Lyron pearlized dragon. It's more clear and it's smoky and bird like and feather like energy. And you can already see it's having a little bit of it wants to be used. It's having a hard time coming out of the bottle. And then, and, and Katie um, Moore, one of the Color Mirrors teachers, and myself uh, have worked on these. This one is the Starseed Unicorn Dragon. This is my personalized dragon from working with Katie. Um, and this one is like a midnight blue and sparkly and pearlized. And it's also about reminding you of the information you already know vastly. <laughs> Um, that can come in and support you. And then um, I don't remember who created the Lemurian dragon. Maybe this was Lisa. This this was you. And so maybe she can talk a little bit about the Lemurian dragon. And those are the uh, ones that I have 
um, on deck right now. And I know Lisa's got some ones in the works as well. So mm -hmm. it's just the dragons have been really calling us mm -hmm. and really wanting attention. Yeah, they're, they're definitely coming through. Suddenly, Melissa is making all sorts of dragons for everybody. Um, and just that that energy is definitely there. Um, she put a post, a, a picture up on Facebook um, this morning asking what's this this cloud can anybody interpret this cloud that was above her house this morning and of course all I see is a dragon <laughs> like, so it's like everything I see now is a dragon so I don't even bother to put my two pennies worth in the comments <laughs> to me it's a dragon <laughs> yeah all right um anybody else before we get going Amy did you want to share could in case you want to rush off if you want to share anything about the um, dragons and the book upcoming book and anything you want to share Um, I'm really, I am really excited about this one. I think the dragons are a definite calling for people. So to open it up to those that sort of love color mirrors, but may not necessarily be a practitioner or a teacher is a great idea because these guys are flying all over the place, obviously in the sky in South Africa. <laughs> um, but I, I think we need as many voices as we can get to talk about the dragons and just really activate this dragon energy in 2024 since we're here anyway and we've got the that energy flowing with us so yeah i'm excited to design the book i want to i'm chomping at the bick to get started so we need to like call in these people um maybe we need to you know have a little chat with the dragons and and they can fly in our writers on their backs. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do, they're doing that because all the people who have signed on have had a, 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 a connection to a dragon message and they went, I've got to be in the book. It, it's just, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think if the dragon comes and talks to you, you really can't not listen to it. So yeah. even if, um, you know, opening this up to other people, then, then we see we get to meet new people that uh, that will be sucked into the rabbit hole of color mirrors. If they're <laughs> not a teacher or a consultant already, they will be after writing in that book, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, there, there's, there's a whole new level of dragon energy coming. It's not not the dragons that we've kind of been working with for the last um, the last 20 years. There's a shift in energy with them. And there are these, especially since in, in 2023, I did the Stargate activation as part of the predictions. And you learned how to use crystal a crystal to open up your Stargate. And, um, and that seems to have opened up the memory or more memories of these Stargate dragons that are coming through. And they are the ones who know you way beyond what you can possibly comprehend you to be at this point in time. They Because they've been with you. Um, um, even longer than the angelic realms have been with you. I mean, they are literally part of creation source energy. And um, so they are extremely important to begin to connect with. And I'm not surprised that a bunch of you are asking for some very weird looking sounding dual. I mean, unicorn dragon, who ever thought of that as a combination? But this is exactly how they're presenting themselves. They're presenting themselves as combination energies. You know, so, yeah, even we know that even with the elements, the dragons will sometimes be fire breathing, but they can swim as well. They connect to water. So they hold two elements in, in their energetic bodies. And of course, they can hold like the chimeras, they can hold these various body parts of other animals together. And one of the most exciting things that I am uh, so thrilled to have discovered is the gargoyles are connected. Of course, you know, I did the shadow cards and they're all gargoyle images and the gargoyles spoke and, and revealed their their hidden information and support for humanity. They are a strand of the dragon's bloodlines. Isn't that amazing? They literally are connected. So there is a there is a connection to their um, to explore as well. Um, so the shadow cards and definitely upcoming the upcoming book on the shadow deck and you know workshops that are going to develop around it are going to be including the conversation around dragons as well. So it, it's it's they not they definitely are entwined in some way, and I'm busy figuring out exactly how that works. Yeah. So before I go into the notes that I kind of um, and and highlights I put together for you, is there anybody else who would just like to share their dragon story, their experience? I think mm -hmm. you see maybe you mentioned Matt had an experience. Are you yeah. okay to share it, Matt? Yeah, sure. Everybody can hear me. Yeah. Yeah. So I I've been to Lisa twice for um, a session and my second session was the chakra balancing. 
So during that whole process, um, a dragon came to me and it was a copper dragon. And so and then I, afterwards, I talked to Lisa and I got more information about that. So like she said, once you see them, you can never unsee them. So <clears throat> the dragon for me, um, he came to me. And so his name is Octavius, which I looked it up, the meaning. And so like Octo means eight or the eighth. So I looked into that, the number eight numerology, but then also through since seeing him and all that stuff, I I bought a dragon stone, um, dragon blood um, jasper, and I can see the head of a dragon in my stone. Wow. And so it's just coming out more. And also the bigger part is now I'm guided to create my own children's book about um, dragon, the adventures of um, Octavius, the copper dragon. Oh, wow. So the more that it's coming through is basically what I'm doing is writing my life story through the eyes of a dragon. Oh, wow. Oh. That's amazing, Matt. So, yeah. Have you ever written before? Is this your first? No. <laughs> oh, my God. You have got no. to connect with Amy because she helps people publish their their, their works on, on Kindle. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You and Matt need to have a conversation. And, and if you need any help, she will help you. Yeah, it's one of those like you just take the first mustard seed and step forward and mm -hmm. trust and go there and then everything falls into place like with you know talking today about dragons and this meeting and all of that stuff so I'm learning to trust more and to be more open with my intuition and then with dragons and my other guides and stuff like that so I'm as Lisa told me she goes you've gone through the gateway and there's no going back so I'm just moving forward and just seeing what the universe has to basically to leave my legacy with yeah. the world yeah. and, and you know deborah uh, who does the editing for who did the, who did our editing for the pearl book i'm sure you should be open to a conversation with you if you wanted her to do any grammatical and kind of um editing because she's a bit of a wordsmith as well so you definitely have people within color mirrors that are kind of used to the energy that we speak and 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 we work mm -hmm. with because color mirrors is about attaining higher consciousness and right. and definitely you you got support systems within this. I mean that that Octavia the <laughs> Copper Dragon. Oh my goodness me, that is just so thrilling. <laughs> I love it. The, you know, my I'm inner a, child's like, oh, I want to read this book. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited and nervous at the same time because it's yeah. like <clears throat> I'm moving into a new phase of my life mm. and all. So then that's what I get to do is like I said to put it out and just to be more my authentic self and yeah. put myself out there to the world and show up for myself and others. Yeah. And so. Matt, honestly, you are welcome if you want to consider writing a chapter that is okay. like the summary version or one element of, of work that then can be used to promote you as an author of your own children's book as well. So okay. you're very welcome to to talk to, to myself and Amy about that. Um, okay. Amy has to go because Brian's obviously taking her out for lunch, but you are very welcome. Anybody that has a... Um, has a connection to the dragons please just come and talk with us yeah yeah so um deborah's got a question hmm? deborah's got a question oh yeah just quickly for matt uh as moira said you know even starting you've never written a book before and delving into a children's book uh well that's that's an entirely different ball game uh <laughs> you may you may want to hone your skills starting mm -hmm. on something you know from your soul by looking at a chapter, just writing a chapter, which starts to plant the seed and mm -hmm. gets you going, gets the juices and the uh, creative juices going before you move on to a children's book because it's, mm -hmm. it's a different ball. Well, that, that is, I mean, Matt, that is one of the, um, I'll have to send you the link for the webinar we did, but um, that is one of the reasons we're doing this book is to to help see people what the publishing process is about. What is it like to write? What mm -hmm. is it like to kind of come out of the closet with your own message? Um, and, you know, the, and this just encourages you to be more visible down the line with your clients and with your with your message. Right. And also yeah. the intricacies, you know, how, how do you publish on Kindle? How do you, um, you know, how, how, how what, what is the purpose of editors and and book design layout and photo photographs and you know all of those kind of things are, are very important yeah so it's so like i said it and so it has begun so mm -hmm. oh it's begun for you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh lisa's finding all the dragons out there and pulling them in <laughs> well, well done <laughs> thanks well, welcome welcome to the family matt it's lovely to have yeah. you join us
Yeah, it's great to be here. I'm excited. Yeah. And anything you need, you can ask anybody in Calamaris. Everybody's there um, very, very um, selflessly and free just to um, support anybody that's on their journey that's discovering color and the energies around the Calamaris system. Oh, yeah. that's nice. Because I, I was looking for a community. So I, mm -hmm. I know I've found them. So that's good. Oh, and yeah. I really resonate with the color mirrors too and the bottles and the messages and all that stuff in colors. So we'll see where it goes. Y'all, you're in very good hands with Lisa, I can tell you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Anybody else want to share anything or mention anything about a recent experience you've had with dragons or if you feel it's sensing your presence? No hands going up, so we're okay. All right. So I'll go, I'll go a little bit into um into just kind of how they've been appearing for me. <clears throat> and it's all been leading up to. You know, when I when I said to, I said to Amy, we got to make the webinar and we got to tell people we're going to do the Dragon Book this year. And since then, it's been book, 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 book. The information, and um, and the the presence of the dragons and the knowledge and wisdom they hold has just suddenly been coming through. So one of the first things that happened was I had a, a galactic um, astrology reading by one of um, one of my friends. You know, she we studied together with Melissa way, 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 way back twenty years ago. In, in England, and her name is Sue Fraser. And she has recently uh, been um, learning how to do, to take your astrology natal chart and also uh, superimpose that on your galactic origins and which star systems you are linked to. It's an incredibly powerful um, way to discover um, your, your galactic history, your soul origins. And um, the 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 report for me was 85 pages long with graphs, with diagrams, with images, with, you know, just incredible information linking my star origins with with, you know, kind of in. And what was really interesting is she was what I found just as a side note, what I found really interesting, what she did was she spoke about my first incarnation into this particular galaxy, you know, the, the Milky Way that we're in. And where I landed and how I landed and who I was when I landed and what did I take on as my mission for this particular galaxy? Because every different um, galaxy, you have a specific um, idea of what you're going to do, but that all ties in together to what your galactic mission is, you know, what your, what your, what your actual source mission is. Um, one of the ways she, uh, well, uh, let me tell you what it was. It was Pluto. I landed in Pluto and in Pluto, um, I, I was very indigenous. I chose to take on an indigenous form from the future. And in Pluto, I learned about uh, refugees, about people who are evicted from their homes, where there's been war, where there's been purging. Um, I've always been deeply connected to um, the Nazi story with the Jews. It was something as if it happened to me every time I, when I was growing up and reading about it, it was like I was part of it. I'm always deeply connected to, and even in England, I was living in England, I did a program for refugees, which um, I did for the government there, which was to 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 encourage refugees to vote in entrepreneurial skills to come out instead of becoming reliant on, on welfare. And um, so I've always been drawn to that. And then, of course, with that comes the healing message, which is to heal the trauma, because our trauma is not just what we've had in this lifetime or past lifetimes on this planet. But trauma also comes from other star systems. And um, and one of the <clears throat> one of one of the traumas I know comes from other star systems is when you have allergies and you are you are convinced and Lisa knows her and I had this conversation a while ago. You are absolutely convinced that there's something on this planet that's going to kill you. It's going to be a bee. It's going to be sugar. It's going to be, um, you know, something out there that you're allergic to. It could be a pollen. And, and it's deep-seated trauma that needs to create that. And it comes from other planetary systems. Your, maybe your planetary system was, was wiped out. Maybe your planet was wiped out. So you, you walk with trauma around you. So... When we are able to connect to our galactic dragons, to the stargate dragons, we are because they hold knowledge. They are like um, like the uh, Ascetic records or Akashic records. And now you pronounce it in your different countries, but the Akashic records, they are Akashic records themselves. And they can take you into the Akashic records, uh, uh, which hold information and they can help you to open up 
and to discover some of that galactic history you have so that you can begin healing it. So if you thought, oh, this lifetime, I have to heal my inner child, my shadow, my past lives. Guess what? Another layer is coming in. It's like more work to be done. Sorry, folks. I'm not the first one to say this, but <laughs> you, might be the, you might be hearing it for the first time. But what's exciting about this is we already have in place with color mirrors this exciting color tool and the dragon bottles are there and even more popping up that it's there for us to be able to access this knowledge and information to really go to deeper root healing. That Does that make sense? Have I lost you or are you with me? No, that makes sense to me, Moira, and I'm not even part of the group <laughs> per se. <laughs> You've got enough sense. exposure to us to know this goal. <laughs> oh, reading over so many years as well, but you have me really intrigued. And what's running through the back of my head is I need to have a private conversation with you later. Uh, okay, fabulous. So let me just bring it back down a layer to the dragon bottles we have in color mirrors. I've got the royal blue dragon with me here. And, you know, the dragons are kind of clear and then they have these little sparkles in them that give them their color. Um, most of the dragons are like that. And I think that the royal blue dragon is a gateway dragon to take us to your gateway dragon. This is the bottle you want to use to meditate and connect with the, the, the dragon that's your stargate keeper, the one that can take you through stargates. <clears throat> but bringing it down a level, when you connect with the dragons in Calamaris that are there, um, they've always opened you up to that potential, the fourth dimensional energies. I mean, the next level that's coming in with a hint of what's coming with the fifth dimension. You can definitely look at Diana Cooper's message. You know, she wrote a book, I think it was in 2018, and she explained about the fourth dimensional dragons in there, and especially the Lumerian dragons. Now, the Lumerian dragons are the ones that are the closest to, to Earth at this time. <clears throat> they are the ones who are able to help us with real practical, um, practical things that we always speak about in colorists. You know, they move resistance out the way. They open us to our power. They are empowering. They help us heal the inner child. They help us to not procrastinate. They help us to remember our mission and our purpose. So that they, you know, it, it really feels the Lumerian dragons are there, and they they apparently. Um, are working with crystals they left in the planet and that is helping to purge and cleanse the energies. They said, Diana Cooper said, if I remember correctly, they had to be here until 2032. So they are locked into the fourth dimension until that time and then they can ascend to the fifth dimension. Of course, as they ascend, everything will be pulled up. You know, we all get pulled up into that energy. They're here to help us survive the whole change to the golden age of Aquarius. So these Lumerian dragons are, um, they are here to help humanity. That is absolutely their purpose. And they're going to help you in various ways. They come to you as, you know, the different dragons in Calamaris. They come to you as the red dragon, which is about healing family karmic issues, healing pain, um, giving you energy, activating you. There is the pink dragon, you know, which is linked to Kuan Yin, which is all about um, love and uh, unconditional acceptance. You know how, you know, these books, you know, it's written in the books. You can go look at the messages, these bottles, it's there. But what we're so so we're already connecting to them at that, that level. I mean, they're so practical. You know, what I love about them is if you spray the copper dragon, the earth dragon, the one that uh, Matt's going to be writing about, you know, they are about healing um, geopathic stress. You know, where if there's been an earthquake in an area, you can just visualize the copper dragon and ask them to go in and repair the earth and the water systems. You can, um, if you've got potholes in your road outside your house and, and you're irritated by them, you know, just say copper dragon, get on the job and next morning you'll see the municipality come and fill the potholes. You know, if they, they really, they can be so practical and so easy to work with. So um, that is all well and done. But since 2023, uh, we've got 10 years to go with these Lumerian energies and dragons. The Stargate that we all activated in 23, those of you who were on the predictions program and, and you, you did it with the crystal and you did the whole movement and the, the ceremony around it, there was a specific <clears throat> um, um, a sacred geometric shape that you were creating by moving the crystal around you in different ways and that helped to open the Stargate. Um, th since then, these star dragons have been appearing. So Going back to Sue Fraser, who wrote this 85-page um, report, which I have to reread again and again, and definitely over time, it is, it's a, a valuable document. Um, she, one of the first lines was about when I chose to leave Source, who was the first being that I met that showed me how to work through the world of energy, actual Source energy. 
How, how do you create? How do you manifest? How do you become something out of pure energy? And it was a turquoise dragon. And of course, out of all the dragons, that is my dragon. That is the one I'm connected to. It is my, um, because it's a dragon of the future. I come from the future and I absolutely have that connection to this dragon. So it just was like, oh my God, what, what is this all about? This is not just the turquoise dragon as I know it here. This is not just the turquoise dragon as it's from the future. This is something even going way back to that. And going back to that leaving source and how you got down through all the eons. And um, yeah, and then I thought I'd tune in and um, you open your Stargate if you want, or you pray, spray the Royal Blue Dragon and ask the, 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 the fourth dimensional Lumerian Dragons to take you, take you and link you and connect you to the Stargate Dragons, the, the, the Galactic Dragons. And um, and when I connected to this dragon, it was, uh, first of all, it was like, oh, God, of course, we're going to do a book about dragons. Um, that was, you know, was just part of the part of the story, but also more wisdom and knowledge of the dragons coming down onto the planet. So every time any of us goes and connects to these dragons, we are bringing collective energy down, not just for ourselves, but for just, you know, thousands and thousands of other beings on the planet. It's also um, it's relevant for the Milky Way at this point in time because we're on the on this cup cusp, you know, of that wobble, you know, the precession that I spoke about in um, in the 2012 predictions where the Earth is going to wobble. You could just look up wobble or precession and Google it, and you'll see this information on it, and um, you know where where things could tilt in various different ways for the planet. And of course, one of the first things to happen is, is the climate change and war, you know, a, a very violent time on the planet. The dragons are needed at this time because they will come and clear those energies and you can work with them and ask them because um, they they are fourth dimensional. They can work closer with you than angelic because the angels are seventh dimension. So they can work closer with your energy field than the angelic realms. They are more practical, more down to earth, more connected to your physical DNA and your vibration here. And they, but they still need your presence, your voice, your body, your invocation of them to get some of the work done on the planet. So if you ever thought, well, how do I heal the planet? How do I make a change on the planet? Well, call in the dragon and where there's been war and buildings have been torn down and forests have been destroyed, call the dragons in to go and do specific healing energies there. That will speed up the 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 change and the recovery in, in places like that. Does, does that make sense? That that's kind of what I was given to give to you today as a why they are coming through and why they need us, but also why we are more easily connected to them than the higher dimensional masters and angels. It's kind of a really um, um, more practical energy and and um, thing to connect with. I don't know. Does that make sense? Have you got any questions at this point? How's this sounding? How's this feeling? Is this explaining why you guys, Deborah, you and Lisa are doing extra bottles? Why are they coming through? <laughs> um, what I like about these dragons, Stargate dragons, is it's going to connect you to the star system you call home. The, 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 the part, the point in time, the point and time in the galactic um um federation space that you call home that you felt more at home than any other space in the milky way might not be this is where you 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 make maybe you're from orion or from andromedia or from draco or from aquila or one of those star systems um and um you you have a closer connection to that but every single one of those star systems and sue fraser pointed this out so well in my in my galactic report that they are different in different star systems. You acquire different gifts, different bits of knowledge and information that you actually are embodying in a human body. I, and I've come to realize just how bloody awesome these bodies are. And I can kick myself for not looking after my body better because this body holds so much information, not just from the Milky Way, but from all these other systems. It's in here. It's within us. And um, and it's time for that all to come out and time for that to be shared. And hopefully 
Um, the dragon book will be a portal and serve as a portal. May we'll infuse it with energy. Definitely anybody who touches the book, just like we did with the pearl book, we infused it with wisdom and love and healing vibrations. Um, and yeah, and that this can become, this can change. I don't know if you've noticed, but cancer cases are up skyrocketing. You know somebody who's got cancer. You know it, or you 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 have you, you know you have somebody close, or somebody that you know, a friend or a neighbor or a relative. It is huge, and it's literally that to me is a coming. It's it's like it's coming like war. You know, everybody going to war to, as as they think that's going to solve their problems. It's all coming to the surface that we can no longer hide and suppress. Our, our emotions, our feelings, our trauma, not just from this lifetime, but from our galactic lifetimes as well. So the dragons are going to come in and help us with that. The cure for cancer is here. We just we just haven't quite written it down. It has we haven't given it a name. We haven't given the medicine a name. Um, and and it's come from dragons because they are the closest etheric beings to our human bodies. Does that make sense? So when you meditate with a dragon, ask it to touch you. I loved when Melissa, one of my first profound experiences in Calamaris was when I was with Melissa on that very first workshop and Amanda Bradbury was there. My ex-husband, Peter, was there. And there's just a whole bunch of wonderful souls that were there. And she said, um, spray the dragon. And, you know, we've done this on our workshops. Breathe it in. Have him touch your skin. Have him go into your body. And now open your eyes and look through the eyes of the dragon. Wow, that blew my mind. And it was far more powerful than the angels. I have to say it was more real. It felt more like, oh my God, I am a dragon. I have a dragon in me. Um, so I know that they're very tangible and they're making themselves felt to so many more people now. If you just look in the mainstream mainstream world, the Dragon's Den in the UK, you know, um, which like Shark Tank <laughs> here in, in, in America or Canada, you know, people were using those terms. What I did find... Um, um find interesting was just looking back at when last did we know about the stargate dragons when last were was their presence or their the information about them um available to humanity and when was it shut down um and suppressed and now it's back again because it's not that we've not ever known about them while living in the milky way and definitely living on this earth um, and we have to go back to um, the Greek mythology and we have to possibly go back to Egypt and we have to go back to um, uh, uh, um, to the Chinese. And we have a look at the mythology of their dragons and, and how they spoke about it and, and what their um, um, and what their um, relationship with dragons was all about. And it was all about power and empowerment and courage and strength and cleansing, transmutation, transformation. I mean, if you look at the mythology of it, it's incredible. The Chinese have nine dragons um, and they, they have colors to them and they have each one has a specific uh, uh, um, offering or a work that they do for humanity. And then um, if you look at Egypt, even the Sphinx, it really is a chimera. It is a mixture of, of, of dragon energy in there. But, you know, it, that information has been lost. That's how they represented the dragons. And, um, and of course, in, uh, well, let's talk about the downfall. I'm not going to give you too much history because I'll write about it in the book, um, um, in the dragon book. We will cover it in there. Um, when the dragons fell was when the Western world got involved. <laughs> the medieval times so it became St George slaying the dragon that was a huge um, um, in the middle middle ages a huge story that evolved where there was this fable of this dragon who was um, killing the villagers because they weren't feeding him literally you know they had they came to an agreement that they'll feed him livestock you know like two sheep a day or three sheep a day and then eventually they ran out of livestock and they started giving humans until it got to the royal, um, it got to the royal um, king's household and his daughter had to be given to the dragon as, as a snack for the day. And he went and, and, and King George went, nope, that's not going to happen. I'm going to, I'm going to capture this dragon. So he did, he captures the dragon. And then he says, I'm only going to kill it if you all convert to Christianity. 
hey ho, enter the Catholic Church. <laughs> so, you know, it, it was all strategic uh, way of breaking down what the dragons really meant in our consciousness and what they meant to us as star people and beings from the from the Galactic Federation. And that and that is when you know dragon change from being the protectors and the guardians and the holders of information and, and helping us with transmutation and they became the villain of the piece they became the ones who are going to destroy the innocence of damsels in distress and that was the dark ages and now we're we're kind of having to and i want to say we have to repair it it served its purpose to have that that story in our heads about the dragons but now we're at a, a stage where we want to reconnect to the true essence of the dragons without the filtering of um, what the church and the medieval times and fear has taught us about dragons. Of course, Hollywood is full of, are they going to get a story with dragons that are like amazing or you're going to get stories of dragons that destroy and go to war and, and you know, um, eat, eat our villages and, and, you know, protect gold and all of that stuff. So um, definitely we're, we're, we're coming out of an era where the dragons were forgotten um, and the next, the next level of dragon knowledge is now available. So that's really what I wanted to share with you today. Is it's, it's exciting times. You have the dragon essences that Melissa's created to help you connect. I do believe to me that Royal Blue Dragon is the one that will help you connect to your star dragon. I think that since she made the Platinum Dragon, and, and, um, and it was a special that was made, it's not part of the system, but I kind of have been sitting with this Platinum Dragon for a while, and I know that he is also part of some star system. I have a feeling he's from the Pallades. He, he's connected to the Pallades. I don't know if you, you can feel that, but to me that is, because when I spray him and use him, I, I definitely start seeing blue flashes of Palladian energy around me and Palladian beings, um, you know, in my psychic vision. So, um, yeah, so what? where do we take it from here is learn a bit more about your starseed origins. There's a lot of people that can do readings for you on starseed origins. And um, I can, if you're interested in Sue Fraser, she's not, she, she hasn't got a website or anything set up, um, but definitely you can connect with Sue Fraser via the Color site or just contact me if you want me to put her in touch and if you want her to do a report. The, reports, the report is not, um, um, it costs a lot of money. Let's just put it there, 85 pages of, incredible information um and um yeah and she spends a long long time pulling the information together so um but if you ever want something like that definitely contact sue okay sue fraser f-r-a-s-e-r -E she she will be there um yeah so i kind of um yeah that's kind of where i'm at that's what I want. I'm so excited to share with you. And <laughs> I hope this is making sense. So what questions have you got? And let's take it from there. Hands up and ask. Go for it. Ty Nev, by the way, I know you joined us a little later, darling. Deborah? I don't have a specific question, but something I'm kind of curious about. Um, here in our home, I, I share a home with my daughter and my son-in-law, and um, we've always been attracted to dragons in this house. So if you look around the house, there's dragon incense, the burners, there's a uh, ceramic dragon, the green and orange one, and they're just everywhere in the house, little in little corners, as well as we uh, burn a lot of dragon's blood incense in this house. Uh, which doesn't mean anything. Incense is incense. They can name it whatever they want. However, on my part, over the years, I've had very detailed dragon dreams. Never anything fearful, but always something of a feeling of love and attachment. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes when I'm daydreaming, I can't even call it daydreaming. It's kind of lucid dreams that I have sometimes in the middle of the day. And Occasionally, it's about a dragon, and it's always, I think, possibly something from Hollywood in the back of my head, a dragon living in a cave behind a waterfall, the secrecy, privacy. There's never any bones of anything that's dragon ate, but I've shared time with dragon. And that's been going on. I'm 64 now, so I would say for at least the last 40 years, hmm. I've been having little dreams of dragons, and they've been coming. No color, per se, and no messages that I could remember or after today, I've realized that they will impart messages to you. 
So I think if I knew that years ago, I would have been more open to the message versus this is a really messed up dream that I'm having here, but I still feel really okay and comfortable in it. So knowing that now, now that I see dragons and if the dreams come up again, it's time for me to really meditate on and see what the message is there. Not that it's just some weird thought going through my head. Absolutely. Um, and ha- have, have you all read that book, The Afterlife of Billy Elliot, uh, Billy um, Fingers, um, something like that, The Afterlife of Billy Fingers? Um, he, he's, it's a book based on a sister whose brother dies and he proves life to her after death by leaving, leaving her various bits of information, weird synchronistic events and things moving around in the house. It's a very interesting book. Melissa recommended we all read that book. But there was one section in that book where I found fascinating. He got to a point, he was describing to, to his sister what the journey is like through the energy world, you know, when you're no longer in a body, when you, when you spirit. And in one of those, um, uh, in, somewhere in the book, he talks about, I went to meet my soul family and the gold dragon let me in. So there was a gold dragon gatekeeper to the soul family. He saw the gold dragon and he was so excited about it. So, um, you know, it, it's, they, they are connected to, um, to the afterlife as well. They're connected to um, the underworld. They are connected to the work you do with shadow. They are connected to um, the, what you're doing now. Deborah is, a, is, a, is, a, is an editor and a wordsmith. And, and, you know, if you think for one minute it, it was you doing the work alone, of course not. Your dragons were there to help you, you know, because I've never knowledge once. and rhythm. Moira, I've never once taken any credit for what I do. I know I channel the moment I sit down, I just start channeling and uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I know that. I, and I'm so happy with that. I'm so happy that I'm always infused with. And and if, can you imagine how these dragons are going to help our authors? You know, um, I know yeah. the pull book, some of them sat down and within one day they had their story written and done. It was just that some struggled for a while and some took a couple of weeks. But um, yeah, it, I think if you really tune into into your star dragon, your your star gatekeeper dragon, that galactic dragon, that higher frequency, that more etheric, um, feralized, see through kind of opaque colors, um, they're very very fine colors. And if you tune into that, I think you probably get your chapter out with one sitting. If you if you really allow them to to work with you, yeah. The energy that can be downloaded to you at that point, Mm -hmm. if you get yourself in that meditative state, uh, align yourself with your dragon, Mm -hmm. you will feel a flow of energy coming through you. And again, as I tell all authors, don't worry about the spelling, the edit commas, just write because Mm -hmm. that flow is there the moment you stop. Well, well, honestly, dragons don't care about grammar and spelling. They just well, care exactly. about the energy. So it's exactly. like get the energy down and the gist of it. That that's where Deborah comes in. She can she can fix it for you and make it make it make sense to humans. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good Lisa, did you did you want to share something about that Lumerian dragon? I'm fascinated by that. Well, you know, I always tell the story. If someone would have told me what four or five years ago, right before I got introduced to color mirrors that I would be working with dragons, I would say they were effing nuts. Like what (laughs) dragons? And it just, it evolved, you know, Um, then, you know, the, the, the system has dragons in it. And then I remember doing teachers with you and Melissa popped on and Mm -hmm. I had asked you, when are you going to do the dragons, elements and angels? And you said, well, I'm going to do it, but it's going to be different. I'm not going to do dragons. I'm like, what? That's why I'm showing up. You go, you're going to be teaching about dragons. I go, I am. And then Melissa came on and she says, well, when you come to South Africa, we'll make your special dragon. And it didn't dawn on me until the other day, you know, when, um, when I shared this with Deborah, uh, uh, Deborah Hoover's parodies, um, when I was in South Africa with the training, the te- trainer of teachers, you know, we created our special soul bottle and I chose G27 clear over clear. And I'm like, of course, it's got to have turquoise in it you know, a ton of it. And Jilly's like, no, it needs to have purple sparkles in it too. So I dumped a bunch of that in there. The purple went away immediately within seconds. And that bottle transformed into a blob. And then when we got to where we were staying an hour later, there was a dragon in it. And I'm like, oh God, you can't make this up. 
So I get a little tool and scrape all the glitter off, shake it up, and within seconds, the dragon comes back. I didn't realize that I had created the dragon in Melissa's workshop until the other day. So, um, but prior to that, the Lemurian dragon came through. Um, there's so many dragons coming through, I can't keep up with them. Um, but yeah, the- Are you not many star systems it. out there? <laughs> Oh, I know. So I, I told Melissa, I said, I'm, I'm going to apologize ahead of time, but there's, you know, it's about 12 special dragons coming through. So, um, but yeah, the Lumerian one really came through prior to going to South Africa. And it, you can see, I really love this bottle. This is how much I have left. Um, Deborah's sending me um, a new one next week or when it comes in, but it, this was just a channeling and it just says, I'm the high vibrational Lumerian dragon. I am both divine masculine and divine feminine energy. My deep turquoise color represents water and air elements, allowing me to communicate through intuitive heart centered vibrations. My tail is all the colors, all the rainbows colors, allowing me to access every color and its healing properties when needed. I carry the light codes and the light language from Lemuria. I am here at this monumental moment to support Gaia and humanity in raising their vibrations from 3D to 5D. It says, use my essence to tap into your third eye chakra and activate your intuitive abilities. I remove any thoughts of doubt, control, fear, or anxiety and move you into faith, trust, flow, and heart-centered energy. Call on me to offer you Lemurian dragon healing. I bring the calm, soothing feeling and scent of the refreshing Ocean misty air, give all your worries and stresses to me to wash away and clear. It is done. May mm. peace be with you. And that that is and the that, dragon's job to clear. They clear. They they are like nature's, you know, or the the, the cosmos vacuum cleaner. They clear. Yeah. Yeah. So, and one of my dogs, my small one, my little schnoodle, he's really sensitive to energy. So when all this dragon stuff was starting to open up, you know, cause when you see one, then you see them everywhere. It's like driving that certain car that you just bought. Now you see them everywhere. So that's how it works. But I woke up one morning, I see these little dragons jumping on the pillow and my dog got freaked out and hid in the corner was shaking. So I've had to ask them to like, can you just not like come into my room and scare the dog? <laughs> So yeah, there's more more dragons. There's the violet flame dragon, the rainbow dragon. There's the seven earth chakra dragons coming through. And then the last one that I knew there was one more and it just finally became clear the other day and it's the source dragon. That one just about knocked me off my chair when it made its presence known. So yeah, dragons everywhere. So this book is going to happen, Moira. Oh, I, I didn't it's, get it. These dragons are not gonna not gonna let these people who, who I mean, I no. have told people so they want to be in the book, and then suddenly they all just one by one whispered away and disappeared, um, which of course is normal because you know with writing and being published, it's huge fears you have to overcome, and and it brings up all sorts of judgments and anger, and you know it, it's a healing process to write and be part of a project like this. But I I, I kind of get that that it you know it it's um it's gonna happen, yeah. Oh, and uh, I did want to mention another thing that kind of led me to this whole Stargate dragon thing was I kept saying to Paul, I need to put an arch in the garden. He says, an arch? Do you mean an arbor? And I go, what the hell is an arbor? So I'm Googling arbor and all these garden arches, which are arbors, were, were popped up on, on my screen. I'm like, I need one of them. So I put one um, in my garden by a gate. It's not the right size. I have to get a bigger one. But um, it doesn't fit. So I'm looking at ones that have got like a flat, this like a square arbor. I'm going, no, 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 it's got to have an arch. It's got to have an arch. <laughs> so again, it, it's symbolically, your human brain tries to translate the information that these dragons give you into something, you know, that feels tangible. And, you know, so it was definitely about, it's not about an arbor. I, my garden doesn't need an arbor, but um, I, I needed to open a gateway. And I needed to talk about that today. So, um, you know, to open up a, um, and of course my March, March card and the group card for my uh, um, group that does the monthly card readings is the gateway bottle. It's all about gateways. So the, all the synchronicities just came in to lead to this particular conversation. So how do you, how do you connect with your star gatekeeper and what are the good questions to ask? You spray the royal blue dragon. And you go into a quiet, do you want to do it now with me? 
Okay, so I'll spray. If you haven't got the blue royal blue dragon, I'll spray it and just um, send it your way anyway. So you just go into a nice quiet space. Take a nice deep breath and just relax your body. Relax your mind, relax your jaw. And just become as still as you can. Just put down the world outside. And then as you have your eyes closed, I want you to visualize or imagine on the inside of your eyes, a circle. And just notice your circle. Is it three dimensional? Is it flat? Does it look like an eye? Does it look like a ball? Just notice the circle that appears in front of your eyes, on the inside of your eyelids, like a movie screen. And then notice the color. And notice if you have any feelings about the circle in front of you. And then step into that circle. Allow yourself to feel what it feels like. Does it spin? Has it got movement? Is it still? Does it vibrate, make a noise, play music? Maybe you can just hear the sounds of nature or maybe nothing at all. Just be in that space for a moment. And then slowly you feel yourself being pulled into its space. And you begin to float into its space. And you notice that it has an opening. And you float towards the opening. And when you get to the opening, you find there is your dragon your gatekeeper, ready to show you who he or she is. And just look around until your eyes adjust. If you can't see it, just feel your dragon, feel its presence. And if you can see it, note the colors. Notice the shape. And begin to remember the connection you have to this being that goes beyond this galaxy. The Milky Way. This is the being who delivered you from source through all the many, many different layers, the many different systems you visited and sometimes spent many lifetimes exploring. And each time when you were ready to move, your gatekeeper dragon was there to show you the entrance and the exit, to clear the way for you. And each time you did that, you spent some time with your dragon and he or she imparted knowledge onto you about the systems you were about to enter. The dragons know everything about everyone. The dragons will let you know if the system you are entering has a masculine, or a feminine dominant energy, where they are in their spiritual evolution, what level of consciousness are they at, what do they need, what can you give them, 
And for a moment, ask your dragon, what your mission is in the system, the bigger picture, and what's next for you. Ask him to remind you why you chose Earth, why you chose such density. Allow the dragon to download that information. Take in as much as you can and know at any time you can go back and you can connect to your dragon. You can ask more questions and you can gather more knowledge and wisdom. You can remember more about your mission, not just your human mission and your soul mission, but your source mission. And if there's any area in your life right now that you are stuck with, that you're blocked, that's not moving for you the way you'd like it to, ask your Stargate Dragon to show you how to resolve it. And thank you, Dragon. And feel yourself being pulled back through that tunnel all the way back until you can see yourself in your mind's eye standing at the entrance of that circle again. And when you're ready, you take a nice deep breath and bring yourself back fully into your body. Another deep breath. Open your eyes to a new moment in your own time bringing all that information with you into your cells. And how was that? Could you connect? You might be a bit dizzy because this is like a real trip down a wormhole. <laughs> so don't be surprised if you're a little wobbly. We don't stand up right away, okay? <laughs> Did you get a sense of that, guys? Anybody want to share? Mm. Yeah, I'll share. Thank you, Matt. So, um, yeah, with the dragon and all, it was very, I got iridescent colors and I got dragonfly wow. also that came up. So for me, it's like the iridescent colors of um, the dragonfly with that on my dragon, the stargate. And then I got the Pleiadians star um, system. Yeah. And then also for my mission was to share my essence <clears throat> and my life's experiences to where like, to help heal other people through my experiences to show that whatever is going on in your life and then through that healing process, there is the other side of life and that, you know, it, it gets better. And then it's just about my life's experiences to show how I made it and was able to heal myself and get to the other side. And so that way to help others to share my experience, to help heal them too. Oh, Bless you. That is amazing. Wow. Yeah. I definitely got that you you connected to the Pallades as well. And that there is that very clear um connection. It's all very silver and blue, um, which is kind of the royal blue dragon's colours as well. But uh there definitely is a connection there and, and more information to come through. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. Anybody else like to share what happened in your meditation? Catherine? Yeah, I'll share. Thank you. Um, so right away when you had me close my eyes, the um, the gold dragon, the, the dragon face showed right up. I've always had a connection with the gold dragon. 
And before I um, teach or have a session, when I step into my higher self, I always have this gold dragon's wings. It's sort of a thing mm -hmm. that I do. But anyway, I was he was right there. The circle was the dragon's eye. And it was sort of a red gold. But when I went to step into it, I went right down the pupil. And um, then there was the, it was a light. When you had us walk through the gate, there was, it was a light. And then I could see it was definitely this radiant gold dragon. Um, when I asked about the purpose, it was um, to uh, uh, awaken and remember and so that you can assist others with awakening and their remembering. Mm -hmm. Wow. That, that feels pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> no words for that one. Yeah. You, you do that, you can write for the Dragon Book too, eh? Elena's <laughs> writing. <laughs> it sounds like you have a story there as well. Yeah. How do you awaken humanity? That's a good story. Oh, oh thank you, Catherine. Anyone else? We're coming, we've got to close up soon. It's just after two, Lisa. Well, I thought this was going to be an easy process, but I um, was struggling at first, and then all of a sudden, the, the medical symbol, which is caduceus, which is the serpent. And all of a sudden I just went down and my dragon appeared. And at first it was like this beautiful stream and waterfalls and just, and I heard this is, this is the place that you go when everything gets heavy and it's just too much. So, you know, and then at, you know, and then we were chit chatting, you know, and then the embrace and, my dragon felt more masculine energy, mm -hmm. which I, I would have thought it would have been a feminine um, or androgynous. Um, and then towards the end, it just went all black. And so all I could see, there was just black all around. And then just seeing me and the dragon, much of my dragon was this deep turquoise blue and emerald green. And it has piercing bright gold yellow eyes and <clears throat> very shimmery um and so it was just there was a download of information i couldn't tell you what it said to me it was just like here it is um and then i got the word hope mm. that's my purpose hope you know having gone through this lifetime so many things and to come out the other end so maybe that's what i have to share with others yeah oh my goodness that's mm -hmm. what that's powerful stuff too thank you Nisa. and i feel feel wow. exhausted i feel like i need to go take a nap because whatever <laughs> that dragon downloaded into me was a lot it's so a download yeah. i'll be processing yeah. that the next so, few days yeah spray a color mirrors bottle around you to just um you know get some of the information um settled quicker and easier and yeah yeah and if you need to take a nap to make it happen yeah yeah there's definitely a, a, a connection to to blueprints being downloaded um you know which comes from the um, akashic records when you connect to these star dragons because this is the information you filed away a long long time ago and we're, we're kind of getting ready to bring them in because if we're going to lift the planet to the fourth and then the fifth dimension, we have to bring in the information from systems we've lived in who were in those already at those dimensions. Um, and that's how you lift the third dimension up. Yeah. It just makes it to me, that just feels like common sense. But obviously, it, it, you know, that's just. I see it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I hope today was useful and um, thank you for the guests for coming in. Um, if you are obviously a, a student of the Academy, you know you can just log into the Academy free viewing section and you can go and view the videos there. And, um, and I will put the recording up as soon as I can. And uh, I think first I have to take the puppies for a walk. <laughs> they pa they're patiently, patiently waiting. There's Lisa. Say hi to Lisa. Yeah. And um, then I will get down to doing some work and putting it out there for you. But I appreciate you turning up today. 
um, just just letting me have a conversation about dragons with you is such a gift. I really appreciate you because it's kind of bottled in me and I have to get it out. And if I I can't talk talk to my husband about it because you know he loves me, but you know he might actually think I'm now nuts. So <laughs> <laughs> to talk to other people who understand dragon energy that that's really cool for me. So thank you so much. Okay, and please, if you have any questions, just send me a message. If you want to get in contact with Sue Fraser, also just let me know. Okay, and please, if you want to get in, do the book. Just start a conversation about this book and help us get the authors in and help the dragons um, get people in that's supposed to be part of this amazing, amazing energy that is just so next level. Wow. Love you all. Thank you so Thank much. You, Thank you, Moira. Thank you, my darlings. Thank you. Have a good afternoon, Moira. Have a good Bye -bye, afternoon. Jackie. It was lovely to see you again. <laughs>